Welcome back to even more from Tuesday's edition of The Daily Rundown with me, Paul Burgess, and my guests, David Semple and Loz. Forgotten your name and it's not Loz, on there? Loz K. Kay. Kay. Yeah, yeah, there Kay, you of go. Course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on to uh, another story. A committee, oh, this will be one for you, David. Um, a committee of MPs has called on the BBC to reveal which of its presenters and stars earn more than the Prime Minister. Why are they using the Prime Minister as a measuring stick? <clears throat> the BBC is planning to publish the names of those who earn more than 450,000 a year. But the House of Commons Culture, Media and Sport Committee has said that there is no reason why the corporation shouldn't also publish the names of those who earn more than the PM, which is £143,000 a year. The committee claims that transparency on pay is a helpful tool to keeping control of pay costs. It is standard practice in public bodies to declare pay packages above the Prime Minister's salary. Is this a good move? Would you like to see this? Well, the first thing, the BBC is publicly funded. Yes. It's owned by the public, so we should know everything, down to the last pencil. I completely agree. That the, that the staff is stealing. I'm sure we've all done it with the for big companies. And I know the BBC is extravagant because one of my best friends 20 years ago was getting 90 grand a year from the BBC in, in Wood Lane just to negotiate co-productions, right? And he's very good at the job, very good at the job. And I helped him get that job because I told him, f apply for that job. 90 grand 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, 20 years ago. He deserved it. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he, he's left the BBC since. And so they do pay their people a lot of money. Mm. And, uh, but I think, you know, when you get these uh, talk show guys, you know, like, uh, who's the guy with the f lisp? Um, Jonathan, you think yeah, Jonathan they're, they're, Ross or what? Jonathan, you Jonathan yeah. Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Jonathan Ross was at the BBC getting a fortune. First thing, that's ITV material anyway. I would actually want to make the BBC a bit more artsy and get rid of all the commercial stuff because we don't need, they don't need to sell commercials, do they? No. So get rid of the commercial stuff and make it more quality or privatize most of it and just keep one channel and make it all artsy or do you think I'm being too elite? Yeah, probably, yeah, probably, David. Uh, but, but, but also, when you, when you, when you can't, um, um, but it's, I'm not sure what the point of this announcement is though. It was actually, what, more than anything, it seems to be, is it just makes me go, are people actually going to say, well, maybe they're actually the Prime Minister's not paid enough? <laughs> is, <laughs> is that, which, um, and I think we'd very, be very hard pushed to find people who would actually want to pay her more. But it's, uh, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the point of this is really. Um, because I mean, I mean, as you know, I mean, we've already been around this 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 whole round of what's going to happen with the BBC. We've just done all of that, and also with the outgoing um, DCMS guy, John Whittingdale, has kind of been through all of that. And then and also a lot of those arguments have been been had really in terms of what what the BBC is and is, is an institution is. I think it's I think it only feels like yet another thing about kind of it seems it's very fashionable at the moment for everybody to be chipping away at the BBC also from the left as well it's like everybody's complaining oh god they, they, they don't they don't report exactly what I want you know so everybody's moaning everybody's uh, yeah, so every, everybody's everybody's moaning um, so I just don't know quite what it helps um, it helps um, I mean the BBC did make the point it's like well it's will make it just easier for, for commercial organizations to poach up poach our good people because also they'll say oh right well okay right fine we'll offer you we'll offer you yeah, more um, that's positive, you know. Um, is that a problem or not? A, a big problem or not? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I, I mean, think transparency, yes, is a good thing, but also to say, I'm surely, not sure what the point in it is. Surely this has only kind of come about because, as you said, the BBC is owned by us because yeah, we public. pay a license. Yeah, but I, I think they uh, forget the that sometimes. Yes. I think they say, oh yeah. no, it's independent. No, I'm sorry. Where do they get the money from the yeah. taxpayers? This yeah. is TV license, which is the most objectionable thing. They've had it since 1945. Why should there be a TV license? In CBC in Canada and ABC in Australia, there's no TV license, but they still publicly fund those two networks with limited advertising on them. Right. I don't see why they can't do the same here. So well, I mean, I, yes, but, but, I, but I think one of the things that's very you can go to jail. Well, so it was like, yeah, well, and, well, I know, and I'm, I'm also I think one of the things that's very amusing is that also actually also the the the, the current government have gone further towards ensconcing that because yeah. particularly is that now because they've closed the the, the the loophole again as what John Whittingdale was describing it is that now. 
now to also to, to what have the iPlayer you need you will need from September yeah. to have a license too so to so to me I mean that's comes it's come dangerously close to also that uh, Tories bringing in a bringing in an internet tax surely surely you yeah, don't want that <laughs> it, it is yeah. an internet tax yeah yeah, yeah yeah I mean so so I mean I, and I'm surprised this hasn't been more contra- controversial I think there's a lot more to come on that actually yeah, do you know I, I have a theory mm. that, that when Tories Labour they get mm. in power mm. they they get so it's like a drug addict and mm. I won't name ministers who do that but it's like a drug addict they get so addicted to these things they can bring in it's like they almost want to punish the public you should, maybe you should pay a license for ITV too we should give some of that to them no maybe you're getting too much money from us and maybe you politicians should take a a pay cut you know maybe the prime minister makes too much <laughs> <laughs> well yeah this was a i mean it was because there, there was a lot of pressure on the government uh, partic- um in in terms of the the bbc review and uh, but also particularly i mean i w- went to see witting dad talking about and and i know that uh, obviously a lot of the commercial companies still remain a uh, hugely unhappy but also the bbc were very unhappy about what they saw as a loophole in terms of in in terms of the use of the use of the iPlayer and that increasing I think it's massively changed people's use of of the you know television because because people say well actually you don't really need television anymore I mean I think this is the other thing is that also our media picture is changing hugely and Mm -hmm. and also I think that's where um, that, that's where it kind of feels like the BBC needs to catch up a bit, as I say, that we're living in a very different environment now, of course. Let's see what happens when all those wages come out. I would also be very interested to see the wages of footballers, for the record. And how much tax they pay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another story now. I'm quite liking this one. Since the uh, 5p bag tax was introduced, Britain's plastic bag usage has fallen by 85%. In 2014, Britain used 7 billion single-use plastic bags. That's just horrific. This figure has now dropped to 500 million in the first six months since the tax was introduced. Around 8 million tonnes of plastic ends up in the ocean each year, posing a threat to the marine environment. The Environment Minister, Therese Coffey, said taking 6 billion plastic bags out of circulation is fantastic news for all of us. And it's worth mentioning that uh, it's also raised uh, around 25 million for charities. Mm. Um, What do we think? Have you seen any of the pictures of uh, fish turtles with I've seen all the plastic films straws the plastic up their stuff, nostrils yeah. and and the and the kind of ring can um, plastic things over their heads and stuff and yeah well well uh, yeah absolutely and also particularly the kind of a burgeoning kind of plastic in the oceans is hugely concerned I mean for once you know I think we've been giving politicians a hard time as we quite often do on this bonkette of news but <laughs> they for deserve once, it yeah but for for once there's it's also, but also what's quite hard is actually getting something uh, getting a, 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 a clear policy that works in a particular way that you want it to do um, this is also one of those cases which is actually it's, there was a, a there was a clear aim um, with also a clear policy that was understandable and that actually has worked. And so, well, for, for, for once, yeah, that was, that's, that's been a clear path to go, to, go down. Um, but it's not like, well, this, but, the, but this isn't the only environmental problem there is, of course. Absolutely. Um, and the biggest um, one and is I think I mean, it was also, I mean, it's still, it was still extraordinary about also, I think the tabloid papers were saying, you can beat the, you can beat the plastic bag tax. Take your own bag as if this was like some way of sticking it to the man. And you were going, no, this is the idea, guys. <laughs> this was the plan. Um, so, so I think there's kind of much more intractable environmental problems that also I think it's going to be harder to deal with than just bringing in five p on on something. You know, it's um, a start though. Um, yeah, I didn't think start. it would work. Um, I still resent paying the five p for a plastic bag. Why are you taking your own, David? <laughs> Surely you bought a cotton one by now. No, I use it to, to put garbage in. Ah, okay, mm-hmm. fair enough. Okay, so, but uh, one of the other things is that I have been a supermarket manager mm-hmm. for 12 years after my mm-hmm. second business went bust, and uh, it was a record shop. Mm-hmm. And um, I made more money actually doing that than anything else. 
But one of the things, if you go into the supermarket in the produce section, you've got the apples, right? And then you've got the pre-packed apples. All that pre-packed garbage is wrapped in plastic, like Laura Palmer mm. in Twin mm. Peaks. So uh, that was a <laughs> guess. <laughs> and and um, another thing, of course, you've got um, glass. If you drop a, a, a glass bottle today, it doesn't break. So why don't we get rid of all those milk in plastic things and bring them back to glass. Why don't we do that by legislation? Because the glass doesn't break anymore like it used to. Well, I've, I've, I've thought of the one, one thing that you can bring in that, that, that's, that, that's in Scandinavia and Germany, for example, is the bottle return scheme and the can return scheme. Um, that's, I mean, we used, we used to have that in this country. When I was a kid, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and they still have that, say, in Denmark, for, for example. Um, it, it makes a massive difference. It's also uh, because, because people save the stuff and they take it back to the, they take it back to the shop if they're stuck and if there's rubbish around actually people go around you know kids go around and pick them yeah. all up because they get some kind of pocket money it's also and that's actually not um, that's also something where also you're not even kind of feels like the also the thing about tax people feel maybe feel they're being punished but with this actually it feels like oh yay we're getting some money back so you actually feel like there's actually a positive thing about yeah, that yeah I mean 25 million um, for charities yeah, is know, brilliant and it's also and mm. also um, I mean, in, in Denmark those bo bottles are re reused it's actually you get coke bottles back and they've clearly been through the system time and time again so they're slightly worn that's i find that quite charming but it's also it's ago. much more so it's actually that's that's actually um you know better way of doing stuff but that's you know. what they used to do in the 60s mm -hmm. we're going to break very shortly you get two cents a coke mm -hmm. bottle mm -hmm. it's time for another short break now can i just text all the virtues of hemp plastic which biodegrades i think we need to start making yep. that stuff uh we will see you again in just a couple of minutes here on channel seven when i'll be chatting to uh mm. some guy who's doing some comedy projects uh, as part of manchester pride on today's edition of the daily rundown stay with us <laughs> 